Okay, um, welcome everyone. We're really excited to have you join us for our Experience BCC virtual open house event. My name is Mike and I'll be your moderator today. Before we begin, I'd like to let you know that our session is being recorded and it will be transcribed should you wish to access it another time. We'll be posting the archive video on our website at bcc.ca slash experience. If you need a sign language interpreter, we do have one available on hand. Just let us know in the chat and we'll have an interpreter join us in the session. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, the traditional territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil First Nations. This session is an opportunity for you to learn more about our English as a additional language program. On our agenda, we have a program representative who will speak about their program for about two to three minutes. We have an advisor available should you have any general questions that are not specific to the program. We'll then follow that up with a Q&A period. The real value of the session is the Q&A portion, and we want to give you as much time as possible to ask specific questions. We'll also share information about upcoming info sessions about programs student services, how to apply, and a chance to win $1,000 toward your tuition. Now, at this time, can I ask the program representative, uh, our advisor and our tech moderator to quickly introduce yourselves? Tell us your name and your role with the college. So Ken, maybe we'll start with you. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken McMorris. I'm the department head of the EAL department. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nancy Nesbitt, and I'm your tech moderator today. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat, and I'll help you out. Thanks. Hi, my name is Domingo Salviejo, and I'm one of the six academic advisors at Vancouver Community College. And I would like to welcome everyone to our ESL um, info session. Great. Um, before we jump into the uh, overview, um, I, I'd just like to speak about the, the Q&A portion. If you do have any questions, again, please submit them in our Zoom chat. Um, if, you, if we aren't able to answer all your questions or if you have any questions after this session, we do have a, a live advisor Zoom group that is meeting from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. today and uh, tomorrow as well at the same time just go to bcc.ca slash experience. Uh, we also are running a poll. Uh, so I'll just launch that now. If you could take a moment just to complete that poll, uh, we'd appreciate your feedback. Okay, I'll turn things over to Ken. So Ken, um, if you could speak about uh, English as a second language or English as an additional language. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, so hi, everyone. Um, so I think all of you have heard of ESL, English as a Second Language. Do it, does anybody know what EAL stands for? What that means? You're allowed to talk, you know. <laughs> Any ideas? No, okay, well, we have a shy group, that's okay. You'll get less shy in time. So English, oh, bam, thank you, Catherine, oh, in the chat Catherine. box. It's English as an additional language. And we, some, we've changed it to additional. You'll see this across Western Canada, especially because second, you know, for many people, English might be the third language, fourth language, or seventh language. You're much smarter than I am. Um, so second doesn't seem logical. And for some people, second sounds like second class. And you know, that's also doesn't make any sense because learning a language gives you a great advantage. So that's why we call ourselves EAL, English as an additional language. But it's the same as ESL if you're used to that. So in our program, um, our main curriculum or our main program is called ESL Pathways. And Pathways is our program that brings students up from 
level five, we use Canadian language benchmarks up to level nine. And level eight, Pathways eight, is accepted as an English 12 alternative. So if a program says English 12 or equivalent, that's Pathways eight. But we also have courses if students want to go towards university. We have courses after level eight to help them go to university transfer English. Or if they just want to study some extra courses, we also have some support courses like writing or grammar, pronunciation, IELTS prep, Selban prep. <gasps> And we have some pro courses with other programs, like if you want to become a chef or, or a baker or a healthcare assistant, you can take those programs with an English language support course to, so that you can ask more questions about English as you study in that program. Um, and they're, they're, really, they're really successful. Um, so that's, that's really the basics about our program. Um, and maybe in the question answer period, I can give you more interesting details, but that's, that's us in a nutshell. Thanks so much, Ken. Okay, before we jump to the Q&A portion, um, I'd like to bring to your attention our ESL's social media channel. Uh, if you'd like to engage with the department, uh, follow us on, on Twitter at BCC ESL. If you'd like to, if you have any more questions and you'd like to connect with an advisor, you can book an appointment on our website at bcc.ca slash advising. Okay, uh, let's jump to our questions period. So this is your opportunity. Uh, please feel free to submit your questions in the, the Zoom chat. Um, don't be shy, this is your opportunity. If you've got any questions about the, the program or, or courses or what it's like, um, I, I do encourage you to, to raise them raise them in the chat. Anyone? All right. We have a very shy. I think we got a shy group. <laughs> okay. Um here's the thing. Um here. so um you know, I'm currently in uh, link five um, at Mosaic. Can I can I join VCC and and um, go into um, ESL pathways? Guess what? Yes, you can definitely take our ESL pathways. However, w obviously, we need you to apply to ESL pathways, and then after that, and then after that, you need to uh, submit your um, link report card. So, so if you completed, for example, link five, um, you can join our ESL pathway six. Okay. So, again, um, you are more than welcome to apply to our um, to VCC ESL pathways, and yeah. So there you go. So there's a, a question here: Is the classes online currently because of COVID? Yes. Um, it's um, our ESL pathways is being delivered online. I guess um, Ken can also talk about that further. Yes, Ken? I can, I can, yes. So exactly, all of our, all of our classes are online right now during COVID. Um, and usually our classes are four days a week for ESL pathways, Monday to Thursday. And most teachers will have lessons on two days where you meet on Zoom and it's a live lesson. And then the other two days will be online and independent learning. So we use something called Moodle. So there's exercises, vocabulary, um, there's chances to ask questions and interact with other students online. Mm -hmm. So there's a variety of different types of ways, but that's what you would expect for our, our online program right now. Okay, Ken, did you see the one about, sorry, Domingo, that yeah. someone's asking, they have a VCC student card, but the yeah. last course was 2017 or 2018. Can they use that to register or do they need to re-register? 
Good, good. Can I answer that? I just yes, want to, the reason why is because he says VCC student card. What does that mean? Is that the VCC ID card, you know, or is it the VCC report card? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm assuming I'm assuming it's just the the ID card because your VCC student ID with your VCC student number that's that's forever. You can you can use that to in order to. Um, register for our ESL pathways. Okay. I just Did asked you... Catherine if she wanted to unmute and ask you a further, sure. like, elaborate. Sure, sure. But if you, but if Catherine, if you're also referring to say, you know what, I have a report card um, in 2017. Can I use that um, in order to register for ESL um, pathways? And and I'm pretty sure Ken can answer that. She said student ID card. So. Oh, so student, yes. So if that is the case, then you should be able to uh, um, register using your student ID card. Um, I wanna make sure you understand this because your VCC student number is forever. There's only one VCC student number for you. Please use it. Because if you do have another student number, it will mess up your record in registrar's office, and you don't want that. Thanks, Domingo. Okay. There's also a question about, can international students attend offline classes? Um, good question. Um, again, let me, um, let me answer this you, using a, a specific, specific, situation. I'm a caregiver currently in Canada. Um, will I be? And, and then obviously um, that is my, my visa status right now in Canada is I'm a caregiver. Um, can I use that in order to uh, register for ESL pathways or apply to ESL pathways and take courses at uh, VCC? And the answer is yes. However, however, there's um, a limited number of period where you can you know, study in VCC because you, you got to remember, you're still you're still considered as an international student. But the fact that you are working currently as a caregiver, then you have um, you should be able to um, you should be able to take courses. But again, if you say is that gonna um, is that gonna let me complete all 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 the pathways level? And the answer is no, because in order to take the e to complete ESL pathways. Um, you got to remember each level is three months in duration. So if your goal is to complete level eight and you're and currently you're doing level five, then that's not going to work. You go you're going beyond you will go beyond that 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 period as uh, um, because of your visa status. And then can I add some information because sure. mm -hmm. it, it sounded like that what you talked about was for caregivers. Correct. And I just want to mention that um, international students can study in the ESL Pathways program. They have to apply through the VCC International Department. Um, but yeah. certainly they can. Um, and, and it is online. I didn't understand the offline the offline part. And yes, my email address is there. Thank you for sharing it, Nancy. Yeah. And our department email is eal at vcc.ca. And we can answer more questions if, if you're not sure. Mm -hmm. Did you I, see? I just want to maybe clarify that offline maybe means in person. Oh, when, when everybody, just so you know, everybody can study in ESL pathways international permanent residents refugees mm -hmm. as long as you're you're canadian citizens as long as you're allowed to study in canada you can study with us yeah. okay um so yeah so there were some other questions um just looking at the last you know, maybe you guys maybe you guys can help uh, me yeah There's, um there's a question here from Maria. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Kath. No, did we did we also answer Catherine's question here? Um, Catherine added. Uh, also, I took pronunciation and grammar before. Can I take them again? Um, yes. 
For the pronunciation and grammar courses, you have to contact the EAL department. So all of those, you contact us first. We enter the permission and, mm -hmm. and then you can register. And we'll check if someone has taken a course many times, like the exact same course, we might say, you know what, uh, we, we think you're finished with this one. But if we think that you can benefit, even though you took and passed the course once, you know, we'll talk to you. And yeah, we don't want to close doors. We want you to have a good experience as long as you can benefit from it. So yeah. just, just ask us. So there's a question here. Can I start taking a prerequisite for LPN like biology 11 and 12 in a self-paced program while waiting for my ESL pathways to start? Now to answer that question, um, what level are we talking about um, in ESL pathways to start? Because in order to do biology 11, for example, you should have at least um, ESL pathways seven, if I'm not mistaken, okay? So, so in other words, I don't know what level uh, you're going to be starting with. So, for example, if you say I'm level five, well, um, Ken should be able to answer that because, because for biology 11, you have to have at least English 10 equivalency. And level five in ESL pathways is not English 10 equivalency. You have to have at least English I'm sorry, you have to have at least um, ESL pathway 7. Okay. Uh, go. Well, looks I like uh, Maria is just clarifying. Uh, she, she got level 8 on link. Oh, level 8 in link. Um, level 8 in link is actually kind of different. Um, again, Ken should be able to answer that question because link 7, the way, the way in, in link uh, the way they teach English is kind of different. Um, again, um, Ken should be able to um, to answer. But if you're gonna go from Link Seven, for example, and now you, uh, you're, I'm sorry, you're um, in Link Seven, and you want to go into um, our ESL pathways. I think I think you once you have that, once you're in the ESL pathways, I don't see any reason why you cannot. Um, take our biology 11 because that means you have the level if right Ken um, yeah it, it depends is is your English level high enough to take that regular course mm -hmm. and if you're not sure I suggest ask an advisor mm -hmm. to show them see I've finished link 8 and you might also ask the department and the department say, well, you know, it's not pathways eight, but for biology 11, it might be okay. Um, until you have finished like pathways eight, which is the English 12 it's equivalent. Sort of, yeah. the, other, the other option is, the other option is you can take a test, which is right now we can offer you take the Duolingo English test. That's that's another option, just you know, because in in the Duolingo you're going to be tested in four skills, which is speaking, listening, reading, and writing, and that will pretty much give us an idea whether you have the English and equivalency, because we will see this individual scores, right? So um, that's 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 another option for you. Can I just add one last thing? Sure. Um, just just so everybody knows, we have students who are studying in ESL pathways who are also taking other courses like chemistry and biology that will, that mm -hmm. they need to as a prerequisite. So you can do both at the same time. You can study in Lincoln pathways at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So we Correct. really want to make things easy as easy as possible for you to succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, one follow-up question from Catherine. Um, yes, I took Pathway 8 in 2017 or 2018. Can I take Pathway 9 this time or I have to do an assessment? So this is something that, that normally you would want to contact someone like me or our department. Um, and I would say probably yes, it would be fine. Um, 
but you also have to consider for yourself, if you have not studied any English language for four years, have you been using English on a daily basis? Have you ignored English completely for five years and lived in another country? Because mm -hmm. those things can change your skills and right. we want you to be successful. So right. if we think, okay, you've kept up your English, we think you'll be successful, go ahead. But if someone has walked away from English for five years, we might suggest, you know what, maybe take an assessment because maybe, okay. you know, you, you need to brush up. But so there can be different answers. Yeah. After two years, we often need to talk about that, taking an yeah. assessment. Yeah, correct. That's true. That, that is you. the option that we also provide. Um, um, to students when when they see us they say you know what I, I I went back to China and stayed there for about two three years can I take this program and and we always say let's you know just to be just to be safe let's do an assessment and we offer that as an option can I ask a pinder what he meant by accommodation are you meaning accommodation for some kind of student assistance, or were you meaning accommodation as in a residence? Yeah, that's a good question. Is BCC, oh, okay, Opinder. I'm just assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming residence. <laughs> no, if, if so, if that's what you're referring to, un un unfortunately, we do not offer that kind of accommodation. However, I just want to make sure that I'm also um, answering. Um, I'm not ignoring your question. For example, I have some, I have some issue with my, you know, with my reading or whatever. Is there an accommodation? that I can that I can ask from from VCC we do have those services that you can that you can ask um, my my um, again my recommendation is speak to one of the um, academic advisors and we will gladly assist you if you do have or if you do need that kind of accommodation one, one question from Manami um, I finished grade 10 in adult education program at BSB, what level can I take? Um, that would be a, another good, good, um, good time to contact the department directly. Um, that would be me or eal at vcc.ca. When somebody is finished, finished English 10 and say adult education, quite often we would, we consider that the same as pathway six. So I probably put that person in pathway seven, but we would need to talk to you. And the reason is the like English 10 is not English as a second language 10. So that mm -hmm. might tell us that the person is pretty good at reading and writing, they can write paragraphs, but it doesn't tell us about your communication skills. Mm -hmm. So, and like I said, we want you to be successful. So we would try talking to you first. Mm -hmm. And if we're not sure, um, again, we might suggest taking another assessment. Yeah. To be sure. Mm -hmm. Great questions. Yeah. Apinder, did you want to elaborate on your question now? I noticed you've unmuted. Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Hello. sir. Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, I want to ask that: uh, Is it uh, is a uh, is there students feel any kind of difficulty to find uh, any kind of accommodation? What kind of accommodation? Can you give us an example? Uh, uh, sir, like basements. Ah, so an apartment. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Domingo? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't. We have no residence in, at VCC, not yet. 
maybe in the okay. near future, but I can't promise you anything. So if that is un unfortunately we do not. So if you want to study in 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 in, um, in the college, uh, you need to find your own. Okay. You need to find your own uh, place to stay. And unfortunately, we cannot help you. Um, okay, sir. So there's a lot of you know. There's you, 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 there are ways of checking out um, uh, you know places where you can rent. And yes, it's available it is. online. Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Sister. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Can I apply for a student loan for ESL Pathways? Guess what? ESL Pathways is free. So there's you don't need to. Uh, you don't need to worry about um, um, tuition fee. What about other expenses? Like what about my um, books and all that? There is a uh, financial aid and you can certainly connect with our financial aid and I can even give you the uh, phone number there. You can call, hold a second. There you go. And thank you, Nancy, for uh, for sending the uh, link. Okay. Any other questions? And if you prefer to to verbalize it, then feel free to unmute. Yeah, please. Can I talk a little bit more about pathways? Oh, yeah. It's hard to shut me up when I start, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I didn't mention before. So in pathways, I did say we from level five to level nine, but in each level, we actually separate the courses. So listening and speaking is one course, mm -hmm. reading and writing is a different course. So this way you can study full time. You can take both courses. Or if you're working or you have a bunch of children, you don't have as much time, you can just take one course at a time. This also lets you focus. Maybe your listening and speaking is really high, but your reading and writing is a little bit lower. So you might start and just focus on building your reading writing skills until they're up there with your listening and speaking. So that's a nice, uh, a nice um, thing to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing about Pathways is we really focus on helping our students be successful with life in Canada. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of tasks and, and assessments and reading and speaking and listening, but we focus them on things that people do in Canada and that our students will do. So if it's academic, students might be listening to a lecture or they might be asked to to work with a group of students on on a project and the type of language they use when they talk to each other that's what we're helping them with with a workplace also how to work with our language they use to work with clients or how do i talk to my employer effectively um, or human rights is a big thing and topics related to indigenous peoples of canada you would have chances to research those to um, and to learn more about that. So it's we make it as practical as possible. And that's one thing our students have told us is that this really is connected to their life. Um, you're not going to read something about kangaroos because really we have no kangaroos here or <laughs> polar bears because I'm in Richmond. There are no polar bears here either. So it's your all of your tasks are connected as much as possible to um, people's lives here. There's I just thought I'd mention those here. things. Okay. 
Is there a final exam in each level? Ken? Good question. No. Um, in Pathways, what we do is similar to Link, if you know about Link, is we use portfolios. So that means during the term, actually every week, you're going to do a task that the teacher will assess. They'll give you feedback. And by the end of the term, your teacher and you, you have many examples of things that you can do at that level. And then you and your teacher, that will show you and your teacher, are you ready for the next level or do you need to continue? Mm -hmm. A midterm and a final exam, for us, that just gives you a number, but it doesn't tell you exactly, do you need to work on main ideas? Do you need to work on fluency or complex sentences or a particular type of grammar? So the portfolio really lets students build their skills better. So no midterm, no final exam, a lot of assessments, and it's very clear for students by the end how their skills are. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. And thank you, Manami, for your question. I love these questions. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anyone want to ask about homework? I love talking about homework. <laughs> yes, can, 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 yes, can. Can. <laughs> can, you, can you explore on the homework? Because we, we get a lot, we advisors, we get a lot of questions about like, how many hours do I need to prepare to get mm. ready for, for the next day? Yeah, and you know, th this is really good. And for people who, who aren't expecting it, they can be surprised. But for Pathways, we were asked by the college to help students get ready for a regular program. Mm -hmm. so can, you, can you imagine if you're studying in the nursing program or for an, be an office assistant program, your teacher is not going to slow down. You're gonna have lots of homework. You'll expect it to keep up. And if you have difficulties, you're going to have to go to the learning center library to get all that extra help. So pathways two, we make pathways intensive. So intensive means it goes pretty fast and every day there's homework. For one class, you can expect homework of an hour every day. And this is on purpose because in a regular program, you also have homework every day to study, review, do essays or reports. So we want to help students get ready. So things go fast and depending on your level, you know, we want it to be good for your level, but it's still going to be quick and homework every day. So you definitely have to make sure that you in your life, that you're ready for that. If you're working full time and you have children, maybe start with one class to make sure that you actually have time to do the work to be successful. But you're adults, so you make the decision yourself. Thank you, Ken. Are you guys scared yet? <laughs> Good advice, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Ken. I ask a question. Please. Yeah. Uh, yes, because I'm just, uh, I want to know what would be my prerequisites, but I, I'm, I just um, applied for the ESL, and that would start by September. So I would like to know what pre prerequisites do I need because nobody has assessed yet my diploma from my home country. So I want to know the prerequisites that I need to, to take as I'm also working full time. So I can have the idea how long would it take for me to start the program I want. Okay, mm -hmm. can I, I, can, I can answer that question. Um, when, you, when you say prerequisite, I'm assuming um, I'm assuming obviously you're referring to an assessment, right? 
So my question to you is, have you taken any assessments? Because in order to apply and register for our ESL pathways, we need to know your current level. And right now, because of COVID, um, you have the option to, to take the Duolingo English test. And pretty much the result will give, us the, um, will give us your level that you can start with when you register for ESL Pathways. So I'm assuming that was what you're referring to when you said, no, um, I have no prerequisites yet. So again, um, it's, it's only the assessments. Now, what kind of assessments available for me? Because I haven't taken any assessments yet. Well, one option is if you're, or if you're still a um, permanent resident of Canada, you can definitely take the Canadian Language Benchmark Placement Test. And this is a free test. And you can get that. You can just, um, you can Google. I can give you, um, you can just Google Western ESL services and you can take the Canadian language benchmark placement test from them and it's free, okay? But, but, but I have to caution you, don't say, don't say, because they're gonna ask, like, why do you wanna take the Canadian language benchmark placement test? Don't say, I wanna go for ESL pathways. No, you just, <laughs> because the, uh, the West, Western ESL, um, ESL services, they, they, they want to place students for the link, right? But if you want to take our ESL pathways, you don't need to mention, okay? Now, um, however, you can, you can free, you can, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you have the, you know, you have the option to take link classes at VCC as well, okay? But then again, it all depends on what your goal is. Like, um, if you say, I just want to improve my English, right? So depending on your level, maybe link is okay. However, if you say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm doing this. It's because um, I just moved to Canada and I want to become um, LPN. Then, then if that is the case, ESL Pathways would be your best option, okay? So again, the, uh, the test that you need to do is the Canadian Language Benchmark Placement Test or if you're, you already have an existing IELTS, um, you know, academic or general training, you can use it um, towards um, our ESL pathways. But again, it also depends on how long did you take your, your IELTS, right? Your general training, is it already five years? Then that's already expired. If that is the case, if you took the, uh, the IELTS and you say, can I take IELTS again? Um, well, I don't recommend because IELTS is quite expensive. It's like around 300 something dollars. It's very expensive. And if that is the case, I'm gonna ask you just to take the uh, Canadian Language Benchmark Placement Test from Western ESL service, uh, Services. Or if you say, well, I'm already Canadian citizen. Well, you can take the Duolingo English test, right? Which is which is, I, I believe it's like 77 um, US or 79 US. It's not free, but compared to $300, that is cheap, right? I hope I answered your question, Maria. Yes, thank you. Um, sorry, can I add one more? Sure, because, go for it. Yeah, thank you. I was able to speak with um, one of the advisor, Chifumi Ishiguro. Okay, and yeah, yeah um, I, I asked her if I need to take the Duolingo and then yeah. he she said um, I don't need to take the Duo because I was um, on the link eight but she asked me if I can uh, and she asked me to to email the cca at vcc.ca is that is this the right one okay I want to make sure I'm um, I, I want to make sure we're on the same page here. So you want to upgrade your courses. That's why Shifumi gave you CCA at vcc.ca, correct? Um, and no, she she just advised me to ask this, to email them if I can start the, I, the I mean, I can, uh, if I can do, if I can do the self-paced bio. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. yeah, you can definitely. Yeah, that's that. That's what I'm saying. Because re remember, you're 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 here for for ESL pathways, right? I just want to make sure. Um, 
she for me was right. I mean, you can you can definitely ask. You can definitely ask uh, CCA if your link eight will suffice. Um, it's fine. Okay. We're not, but I'm not gonna guarantee what um, what their answer is gonna be. But yeah, you have the option to ask them because okay. link eight is quite high. Thank you. However, um, what are you using this towards? What is your goal, Maria? Um. I'm looking forward to take the LPN program. Here's my here's my um, um, answer to you. I would rather focus on ESL pathways. So in other words, I would like I'm 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 just gonna go for for the ESL pathways. The reason why is because once you complete ESL pathways eight, that is equivalent to English twelve with a B for the LPN. Makes sense. So okay. you can you can definitely take um, you know you can definitely take biology, twelve, you know, uh, while you're doing the pathways. That's fine. I mean, however, my my, if you're gonna ask me, I'm 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 gonna say focus on ESL pathways. Use it to apply and register and begin okay. with ESL pathways. Because the biology, you can do that later on, or if you want to, you can do it at the same time. But again, pathways, I would say, is much, much, I would say that is a your priority. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Can I um, add something? Not about the LPN, I think that all, that's all clear. But Maria mentioned that you can only start studying in September. So just so all of you know, if you're applying online, you're going to choose the September term, but you can take our courses that start in May and June and again in July. And these are Improve Your Grammar, which is a communications class, lots of talking and interaction. Improve Your Pronunciation, again, lots of talking and improve your writing. So it's a way to start building your skills get a good foundation and then when you do take ESL pathways in the fall you know you'll I think that you'll be even more prepared so mm -hmm. just so you know you don't have to wait until September we have these courses that are really good and you can still apply for them any additional questions I think we must be amazing presenters. I mean, just, just the A++ presenters, because we answer all the questions before people ask. <laughs> Hell yeah. We read their minds, hey? <laughs> you guys. I think there's another one, is there? Okay. Yeah. One, do, do you have a question? I see you've raised your hand. Or are you clapping? <laughs> Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute. Uh, that seems um, like a more personal interaction. Again, there is, um, I'm repeating myself here. There's um, advising info session and um, we'll be able to um, answer your questions if you do want to speak to an academic advisor um, it's happening until 5 p.m today and then tomorrow it starts at 9 30 in the morning to 5 p.m yeah maybe maybe i'd like just to just add uh, domingo um y y your answer to maria kind of makes sense it, it might make sense to let the advisors know what what is your goal what what do you want to achieve and then they can help you determine what what that path is yeah because yeah pretty much because it all depends on your end goal right because if you say you know if you state clearly your end goal then the, you know any of the academic advisors will you know give you that options to say hmm i think it's better if you do this because it will lead you to that goal better. You know what I mean? So, yeah.
If you haven't applied to ESL Pathways, please do because again, today and tomorrow, um, admission, we are waiving the admission fee. So you can use your $35 for something so, else. Um, Domingo, just to clarify, sure. uh, the, the, the course is uh, free, but the admissions, the, the, there's still an admissions, but uh, during this limited time, we're waiving that, correct? We are waiving the admission, f yeah, admission okay. fee. That's okay. it. Okay. Only for today and tomorrow. Oh, actually, it it's uh, it expires until. Um, oh, is there? Sorry. Yeah. yeah but uh, as long as you use the code, by the way. Sorry. Thank it, you, Michael. Yeah. Let me let me double check the date. Um, uh, it 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 will open until Friday, April thirtieth. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And, and just to clarify with the code, it's info <laughs> 021. Because sometimes it's, it looks like in, in, in F0021. No, it's not. You wanted to say info the whole time, didn't you, Domingo? <laughs> <laughs> because I would, be so ex I would be so confused too. It's like, what? what? Yeah. what? Info 0421, it's in the chat. Yeah, exactly, sorry. Any other yeah. uh, questions? Any questions? Uh, here's a question. Can I use my ESL pathways um, to meet the um, English 12 a requirement at BCIT for some of their programs? And the answer is yes, you do. Yes, you do. And this is good. And I like Ken showing <laughs> his thumbs up. Yes. Can I use it to go to Langara? And yes, of course. In the same manner, because they do have um, similar to our ESL pathways, and we do accept this, uh, theirs as well. Okay, so it's a quid pro quo thing. I don't want to, yeah. Yeah, we're also accepted at by Kwantlen Polytechnic there University. That's a that's a new one who accepted us last year by the Justice Institute of BC, by most yeah. colleges across BC. Yeah, most. I think the the main ones who don't accept us are SFU and UBC. Yeah, and maybe some universities like that. Sorry, Domingo. You yeah, no worries. But here's the thing, though. I just want to make sure. Thank you for mentioning UBC SFU because. What I want you to do, if you want to go into UBC or SFU, then go and, and, and complete our English 1101-1001, which is a university English. And guess what? Yeah. You cannot go into our English 1101-1001 without finishing your pathways, right? And also, you need to do the, um, you need to do the uh, um, pathways to university pathways to university, which is, which is our, our, the requirement for that is obviously uh, ESL pathways again, right? And and I strongly, strongly recommend to everyone that if you're looking to apply to these, you know, posh post secondary institutions out there, ESL pathways is is the best, really, because we are teaching you all all the four skills, right? Speaking, listening, reading, and writing. Just to give you um, um, an example, I had one student, when I was new in, in, in advising, I had this person who completed um, English 12 from the school board. I'm not saying, it's the way they teach um, English 12 in, in adult schools, they assume that, you're, that English is your first language. You know what I mean? So in other words, they're, they're, you're good in reading and writing, but the listening and speaking, that's going to be an issue. And I had this, this issue with, not really an issue with the students, just that sh we, we were struggling together because we're not really communicating, although her final mark is amazing in English 12. Okay, so again, ESL Pathways is your best bet if you want to learn English because again we're focusing on four skills speaking listening reading and writing and we have amazing instructors 
You really do. And if you are going towards the university path, after Pathways 8, we have two courses to help mm -hmm. you yeah. that are requirements. So that EAL Pathways to University English mm -hmm. and Nine Reading and Writing. And these two courses together, they'll, they focus completely on academic skills. And then you'll learn high level research, high level argumentative essays, and the EL pathway to UT English. This also introduces literature. Mm -hmm. So you get that experience analyzing literature, discussing it, and you get experience communicating in a really academic situation. So how do you talk to your professor in a university or a regular program at VCC? It's different from talking to your friends. Mm -hmm. How do you write those emails so they're academic? Mm -hmm. You know, no more smiley faces. <laughs> but it really we want our students to be successful when you get into those programs so they're really and they're quite popular courses too so i'm really happy with them yeah. something to think about yeah any questions and you said no more smiley faces that that takes a little too close <laughs> yeah, to exactly. <laughs> I, I need to stop using that in my email sorry i use smiley faces all the time too but also you know what email. i mean okay so it's yeah. not only me okay. <laughs> um I, I just want to be mindful of time we, we've got about uh, eight or nine more minutes um if you do have any questions uh, that this your last chance, but uh, I, I don't want you to think this is an end. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, you can contact Ken directly or contact EAL at uh, bcc.ca. If you'd like to uh, set up an appointment with an advisor, then uh, we encourage you to do that too. And again, just a friendly reminder that uh, we are offering a live Zoom meeting with uh, an advisor from 9.30 to 5 p.m. Today, so you've got about another hour, and then as well tomorrow, we'll be offering 9:30 a.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow as well. The the link can be found on our website at bcc.ca/experience. I just have a, a few more slides just to to wrap up here. Um, I'd like to just share with you the services that we offer to all our students. We offer advising services, which I mentioned. We offer financial aid. Uh, we offer services for Indigenous students, disability services, counseling services, and free professional tutoring. So that's on our website under uh, services for students. Mm -hmm. For next steps, we encourage you to attend the info session. Uh, check out our website at bcc.ca slash info or um, meet with an advisor. You know, I, I think that'll be a very valuable experience to, to speak with uh, Domingo and uh, ask any specific questions you might have. And if you're ready to, to make the jump, uh, you know, we encourage you to, to go ahead and apply. Um, the, the tuition, or excuse me, the admission fee is, is being waived, which I'll share with you in the next slide. Uh, if you apply today, we'll waive the application fee. Um, it's a $35 value. Just go to bcc.ca slash apply and uh, Info 0421, not, not info, <laughs> info <laughs> 0421. Uh, Nancy uh, also shared um, a, a copy of this uh, slide deck as a downloadable PDF, which all this information is available. And finally, um, although tuition is, is at no cost for this program, if you are interested in other programs, we are offering a contest for a chance to win one of three uh, prizes of a thousand dollar tuition credit. So uh, we'll have uh, a form available on our website again at bcc.ca slash experience and uh, just type in the code learn and uh, you'll, you'll be all set. Okay, any last thoughts or last minute questions before we wrap up? I just want to thank everyone for, for, for coming. It's so we have a very lively discussion. Thank you again. And I look forward to uh, seeing you in person, hopefully in September. Thank, thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I encourage you to reach out to, to you know, Ken or, or our advising services. You can see they're a very friendly bunch and uh, always have good advice for you.